are all God-given treasures. However, you do not realize their magnificence and you waste them greedily to acquire lesser assets. Stop and think about the meaning of each one of these gifts and guard them against things that consume them. Our dear Father, we are so blessed this beautiful morning to be together once more time for the purpose of edifying one another. May we count on your blessings today in order for us to be receptive to the precepts we're about to receive. May we receive the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, in our hearts and in our minds in order for us to start continuing with this beautiful path. Bless us all in every single step that we take this beautiful ro road in this planet. May we, may we count with our mentors and guides to continue guiding us throughout our life. For all these things, Father, we say thank you from the bottom of our hearts and asking your permission for us to start our Sunday meeting in the name of your Son, our Savior and Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Hannah. And actually, this message comes quite often for us. The message of, um, we only value the things after we lose, right? I'm so sad about myself because I do that. How many times, right? Um, we have to lose something to to value it. I, I remember when I was I went to when I, in, down in Brazil. You're mandatory to go to the military, and I, I had an experience. I didn't stay in the military, but it had to be like for for, for a week. And I remember that they controlled the time we could drink water, right? Something we take for granted every day, right? So you are thirsty, you just go and drink water, right? That's what you do. I mean, we have tap. We can have tap water. In our homes, all of us, we have it. And what's the value of that? None. We don't even think about that until water is not available. Until you go through an experience with, with where water is not there for you. And then you notice that the value of water is life. Without water, we don't have life. And sometimes I think God gives us those experiences of uh, scarcity of lacking and um, I know I, I don't know about you but I tend to be very rebellious when the experiences of blackness come and after the fact of course I'm not mature enough yet to understand them right away but as time comes and times go I realize how much I learned from those experiences how much the lack of something anything that I wanted or needed taught me way more when we have abundance. Because when we have abundance, we don't learn, right? We don't put value on things, right? Abundance is not a good teacher for us because we're still children in the spiritual sense, right? You may look at me and like, I don't look like a children. Yeah, a child, right? I've put a few pounds since I was a child. And, uh, but spiritually, we're still children in, the, in, in God's eyes because we're still maturing spiritually. We still have our own mind to deal with. And the topic today is exactly that. The topic we're going to be talking a little bit today is, I'm asking to get inspiration because it's actually one of the crucial things about understanding about every single one of us, which is there's this amazing passage in the gospel where Jesus told us, ask and it shall be given to you. So he told us, the importance of asking what we want to God, right? 
when we want to ask, ask God what you want. Talk, develop this connection, this direct connect, connection with God, so you manage your life. So you connect, and uh, God will give to you what you want. But we get the surface of that. Most of us, when we understand about this relationship with God, we start that, that, that uh, you know, immature child, because we start asking for things that are superficial right to us and let me tell you a story that I heard this story maybe more than 10 years ago and to this day I thought I, I thought it was too exaggerated and honestly to God I just kind of got it today and let me tell you the story there's a speaker very well known in the spiritist movement especially in Brazil his name is Givaldo Franco he used to come to you San Diego once a year before COVID I'm not sure we're gonna have him again because his travel, he's now 96 uh, or 97, and his traveling is more limited. But well, maybe we may still come, may still come to visit us in San Diego one more time, at least before he goes. And um, he used to tell a story about a sister nun in uh, Salvador called Irma Dulce, Sister Dulce. Some people know from she was very well known over there, known in that community because of her work of charity. She dedicated her whole life whole life to support uh, communities that are financially challenged. She had a hospital. She would have a care of youth. See, very similar work to Givaldo Franco does, right? She was well known in that region, right? You could think of Madre Teresa. Madre Teresa was one. Uh, she got a Nobel Prize, right? But it's a similar work in a community in Brazil called Salvador in, in, in Bahia, state that's very challenged economically in Brazil, right? And she, towards the end of her life, when she was getting older, she had a lot of um, uh, physical problems, right? As we age, she was uh, finally bound to bed, and she could uh, pretty much um, uh, need to be, you know, resting all the time because the level of disease she was going through. But she was in a, in a, and Givaldo went to visit her because, you know, she was in such poor condition. And Givaldo went there to give her something like be bring joy to her or something because she was bound to bed right suffering and to his surprise when she, he went to visit her she was still a light she actually gave him her energy and there's this passage that devoto tells in this conversation he had with her but sister how are you doing because now i know you did so much in your life you're so active you did so much work for others and now you cannot leave the bed. You're bound to bed right now. And then she told him, Vivaldo, I can do a lot. Every time I breathe, when I take the air into my lungs, I tell Jesus, thank you, God, for this air. And when I, when I exhale, I, think, I say, thank you, God, for everything. So every moment I breathe, I say thank you. And I use that as my clock. I'm still here because if I'm still breathing, I'm still, if I'm getting air, I'm still here. I do that all the time. And then when I heard that story, my goodness, she prays all the time. She keeps praying all the time. Now. And I thought to myself, why is that? That was too much to me. And today when I was studying for this presentation, I understood the most important thing we are is our mind guys our bodies I know you see this body here right now right and I'm seeing you in your bodies because I don't have spiritual vision yet <laughs> but we're not the body I know it's hard to say that right because we're so much into our bodies into what we the way we look we look in the mirror and that's what we are right we look in the mirror and we say this is me this is an easier. I look in the mirror, I can tell you from me, right? And we have such an identification with that, right? But yet, we're not that. We are the spirit. We are spirits. We are souls. We are beings that will never die. We are minds. And the minds we have right now will never die. This is who we are. I know we have to take care of the body. I know. We already know that. 
right? We take our showers, we, you know, do our things, right? But do we do take care, do we take care of our minds? Because the body's going to go away. What about the mind? What about our thoughts? What about our ideas? What about what comes to live in our minds? What ideas we allow to come in? What thoughts we allow ourselves to think? How we manage that? And the vast majority of us, the vast majority of us, don't pay much attention to that. Because we think it's abstract. It's something not real. Even scientists today, they believe that the mind is just a chemical reaction in our brain. That's what they think. They're going to get a big surprise. We don't know when, when they realize that the mind is independent of the body. There's signs already, but they're not there yet. So our minds is the reason why we're here, guys. And what nurturing our minds, nurturing our minds, nurturing how we think and act is the reason we are in the flesh. Because you could say, I need to, if I'm spirit, I'm never going to die. Why God made me? Why put me in this body that's going to get old, that can get sick, gives me sometimes pain, is not ideal maybe, has some limitations. Why God did, did this to me? Why God gave me this body that has so many limitations? Because this body you have right now, and I have right now, and all of us have it, is the best teacher for our minds. The whole purpose of the body is to give you an experience that educates your mind. Educates your how you grow mentally, how you see yourself, how you nurture your ideas. And ultimately, what's the recipe that the gospel gave us? The recipe that came from Jesus is the ultimately ultimate happiness is going to happen it's going to be when we become loving minds when we're capable of loving everything around us indeed let's say that the journey is long at least for me maybe hopefully you guys are a little closer than that but i'm far away from having love widespread love i can barely love my family ask my wife over there so some days i'm even my wife I have some challenges, and uh, 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 I'm blessed. Even Dad, God, God bless me, I have a great wife. <laughs> but even, even then, it's so hard some days, right? Some days we disagree, some days we don't think the same, some things, priorities are different, right? So guys and girls, pink think different, right? So it's, it's hard. But I know that that's what God gave me right now, a small group of people, a small group of people. For me to work on my mind. So, the greatest insight is that in your mind is your life. Your life is in your mind, not in your body. Your mind makes you happy or unhappy. Your perception is what defines you. I don't know about you. I love, I for a long period of my life, I didn't live close to the ocean, right? And we're blessed here in San Diego, we have the Pacific Ocean right next to us with this cold water that works as an air conditioning. <laughs> That's why we're not we're not all sweltering right now here. Without the, the cold water from the Pacific Ocean, this would be really hot. And I don't know about you, but I for me, just go into the ocean, just being like breathing, breeze, just feeling the breeze makes me so comfortable, makes me so happy. Just all it takes sometimes is just drive a little bit closer, just smell the breeze. I, 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 still, I still feel that deep in my soul. But I have had days where my mind is so polluted so into my little problems, so mad with others and mine actions, that even right in front of that ocean, I was in my own hell, my own pain. And I didn't see the breeze, I didn't feel the breeze, I didn't see the, the water, I didn't notice the sun. 
And did anything change in the beach? Like, was anything uglier that day? No. Everything was the same as it has always been. But my universe inside, my mind inside of me, was not open, was closed by my own choices. I think when we fully understand that, when we understand that we are our minds, we take control of our lives. This is the major click of spirituality. Because the moment you understand that you are in control of your mind, you cannot control your body. You cannot control other people. There's so much you cannot control because it's outside of you. But there's one thing nobody can take from you. <clears throat> nobody, not a single person in this world, can take control of your mind. It's yours. Even if they put you in jail forever. Yes, they control the body. But not the mind. The mind is the most precious element of spirituality. And then when we talk about spirituality, when we talk about the spirit, and we talk about all these things about the spirit living more than the body and being forever, people say, well, Anisia, or people ask, how is it going to be my spiritual life? So if I'm never going to die, what's going to happen to me after I die? And people think about this heaven or hell or things that are going to happen in the future, right? But the the question is not that. You can know what's going to happen to you in the future, right here, right now, in this very moment. Why? Just look at your mind. Just look at the mind you have, because the mind will be the same. The mind doesn't change. So here it is. By knowing that, it should give us the control, the tools to start working on yourselves right now. By the way, if you realize that, let's say, let's say you took this, what I told you, and I, let's say we all agree with that 100%. Sometimes we're going to go back to ourselves and we're going to see there's things in my mind that I don't, know, I don't like. But that's okay. Does God know about that? Absolutely. Would God love you any less because of anything is in your mind? No. God's love is infinite. What, the, what happened is that it gives you, me, and all of us, when you are aware of it, gives you the tool to start working on yourself. And that's why I think spiritism and the gospel is so hard in a way, right? Because the recipe to happiness is the transformation that happens in us. Wouldn't it be easy, right, if we could, like, light some candles and uh, walk a certain path or wear certain clothes and that would save us? It would be amazing, right? Many people believe that there's a procedure you can do to be saved. But unfortunately for us, we have been told that the saving happens when our minds join God, when we bring God to our mind like Madusi did, even in the last days of her life on earth, right? Can you imagine how this beautiful mind woke up on the other side? Can you imagine the experience for someone that is in balance, is healthy in the mind? It is when the body is gone. It's probably unimaginable. That's, a, that's the conversation we would like to have today. And being aware of that, I think, is the most beautiful thing. Story because the journey still starts, right? We still have to unfortunately go through the experience ourselves. With that in mind, we're going to say goodbye to everybody in our recording and we'll get ready to go for our meditation and passes. Thank you very much. Thank you.